Yes, class. So in the last class, we had completed both the parts. One is dimensional formula formation. This also we could complete as well as we had completed the formation of formula. Yes, finding out the correct formula. So uh, one thing that we discussed in between was that dimensions of two quantities, if they are getting added or if they are getting subtracted, that would be seen. Like you can only add kgs to kgs, meters to meters, centimeters to centimeters. You cannot add five meter height to 50 kgs of weight, right? So this also we had discussed the dimension of two quantities. If they are getting added or they are getting subtracted, that would be the same. Fine. So for finding out the formula, there is just one technique that you have to do. Whatever quantity is proportional to rest of the quantities, just write it down. Make the proportionality sign, mark it, and then equate it. Remove the proportionality sign, put the variables x, y, z, whatever you want to find out. And then accordingly, you will find it. See, uh, Whatever is the known quantity, one will always be known, other will be unknown. So for the known quantity, what you have to do, put in the dimensional formula, whatever you have studied, and then equate it. Now see, whatever variables are on the right-hand side will get equated with the exact same variables of the same side. For example, you have one variable for mass. You have one variable for mass over the left side. Equate whether the power is only single alphabetical power or double. Just add it and equate it, like x plus y plus z. Make equations, solve your equations. This is how we had seen questions also. Last part of this chapter that is left is conversion of units. So these many questions we had seen. Suppose we'll here also we'll start with the help of question. So this says that convert one Newton into dime. So see, when I have to convert one Newton to how much dimes? So one thing is known. Here the known quantity is this Newton and unknown quantity is this dime. So I have to convert one Newton into dime, right? So one Newton is known. One is known. Newton is known. Dime is known over here. But one quantity is missing where I have put the question. So what, what am I talking about? This is actually, we write in terms of N and U. N will be the number magnitude of the quantity and you will be the unit of it, SI unit, CGS unit, whatever. So magnitude one, this is N1, unit one is U1, this is unknown, which is N2, and this is U2. So first unit, second unit, uh, magnitude first, second magnitude, like this we write. Now, how will you solve your questions? Equate it, multiply these two and equate it. So N1 U1 is equal to N2 U. This is the formula that you have to use. This is the technique that you have to use. So for example, one Newton. So Newton is the SI unit of force. This is known to us. So for that matter, for Newton, what we have to do, one N1 will be one and units is, unit is given for force. So what you have to do, what is the dimensional formula for force that we have studied? m l t to the power minus 2 mass multiplied by acceleration so that is what we have to write so u1 is going to be m l t to the power minus 2 so m1 l1 t1 same thing n2 is unknown to us had it been given we would have put that value so n n2 is unknown to us so we'll put it as n2 only now coming to u2 right for u2 See, dime is the CGS unit of force only. So if even if you change the units, dimensions remain the same. So dimensions will be same here as well. So this is going to be m l t to the power minus 2 only here. Why? Because Newton and dime both are the SI units of force. And force has one single dimensional formula that is m l t to the power minus 2. Right? So in order to differentiate the known quantity with the unknown quantity, what we have to do, we'll just put one and two. So one here on the left hand side for the quantities that is known, for the quantity that is known, that is Newton, and two here for the unknown one. Fine. Now our task is just to find this n2. Fine. M1, L1, T1 to the power, T1 to the power minus two, N2, M2, L2, T to the power minus two. This is the equation that has we have achieved. Mm -hmm. So what will be N2 equal to? N2 will be equal to 
this whole term gets divided here. This is how you solve an equation. The entire term that is kept on the right hand side, we'll shift it and bring it to the left hand side. So what it will be? It will be m1 by m2 together. What is the power? Both have one. m to the power one is there. Then coming to L, L1 by L2 to the power, that is also one. T1 to the power, T, T1 by T2 to the power. What is the power of time for force? It is minus two. So one common, we are going to write it, that is to the power minus two. Because even if you write separately, you will get the same thing, right? So N2 is this value. Now we'll have to write in it in such a manner that both have the same units. So see, what is the SI unit of mass? You are converting unit. So how will you convert? You have to convert by converting individual units. Like we'll convert first mass, we'll convert length, then we'll convert time. All right, so mass is SI unit. I think it's better if we write SI unit over here. This M1 is going to be one kg. Why one kg have I written? Because this mass, M1, this is from the SI unit side, Newton side, right? Newton was an SI unit. So this mass, M1, this is going to be in kgs. And what was M2? M2 is obtained from here. That is from the CGS unit side, right? This is obtained from the CGS unit. So this is going to be 1 grams. Fine. Length, L1. L1 is obtained from the Newton side. That is from the SI unit. So we have to put in the SI unit of length. So this is going to be 1 meter. And similarly, S, uh, L2 is going to be 1 centimeter. This is 1 centimeter. To the power 1, because their power is 1. Here also we have 1, here also we have 1. Then we have here temperature, uh, time. For time, T1. See, for seconds, uh, seconds is going to be there in SI unit and seconds is going to be there in CGS unit. That's why when we started this lesson, we initially learned all the SI units and CGS units because it was going to be used here. Right. So this is going to be one second. This is going to be one second to the power minus two. Fine. This is going to be to the power minus two. Now what we have to do, we have to cancel the units. So can I cancel one kilogram by gram? Is it possible to just cancel one kg by k one gram? It's not possible. Right. We have to convert one of the quantities into a similar one. So one thing I can do, one kg can be written as thousand grams, right? This one kg, because now how will I solve this question further? One kg by one gram is there. They cannot be canceled directly. But if I write it, thousand grams by one gram, hundred centimeters by one centimeter, and one second and one second, they are already in the same. So centimeter, centimeter now gets cancelled. Gram, gram, now they get cancelled. This entirely gets cancelled because seconds is there in the numerator and denominator. So what is left? Look here. 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2 means 1000 into 100. That is 10 to the power 5. So what, wa what was our equation? N1, U1, that is 1 Newton. N1, U1 is equal to N2. What is N2? 10 to the power 5. U2 is 9. So N1, U1 is equal to N2, U2. We have finally obtained this. Right? So this is, uh, you, this. if you can remember, try to remember it. This will help you in upcoming lessons only because in laws of motion, in any ways, you have to remember this SI unit. So if you can remember, then it's well and good. Otherwise, right now, you have to understand how to convert the formula. See, even if you do not know, if you do not remember the conversion of this, so what you can do for this conversion, if you perform this dimension analysis thing, the whole steps, you we could at least obtain how to convert it. Like the next question is conversion of joules into erg. This we'll see. But first tell me regarding the first one, how to solve it. I'm just repeating the steps because these are the steps only that we have to repeat in every question. Just write N1, U1 is equal to N2, U. Fine. After writing N1, U1 is equal to N2, U2, put the values of N1, U1 dimensionally. N1 will be a constant. So just put in the number. N1 will be whatever number is given. U1, you will put in the dimensions. 
Now bring all the diamond like dimensions together. Just divide it the way you divide it with their complete power. All will have the same power because whatever is on the right hand side is equal to the left hand side. You will convert the same quantity, you no know, physical quantity. Force will into force, energy to energy, right? You will not convert one newton into pascals. That is the pressure SI unit that you won't do. Then put in put in the SI unit and CGS unit and convert one of it so that you. So it was easier to convert kg, even if you convert grams into kg to solve it, that would be the same. Here you will get 10 to the power minus 3. That will go up in the numerator. That will again become 10 to the power 10. So this is how we solve the questions. Note down the steps. Did you understand how to do this? Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Martin, is it clear to you? Yeah, ma'am. Fine. Note it down. Some more questions we'll see from this. I'm going to show the question. I'm going to scroll down.
I'm gonna go down. Now, next uh, question is convert energy of 10 joules into work. So this is not one joules this time. So N1 is 10. When we write this equation, no. N1 U1 is equal to N2 U2. See, N is given as 10. First unit is given as joules. N2 is again unknown to us and U2 is given to us as erg. Fine, this is the... Uh, values of N1 and N2 that we have. Now, again, energy, work done, I've told you to remember one single dimension formula for it. And as I've told you, that will all only be used. So energy is the SI unit of work done energy. All those kinetic energy, potential energy, everything that has the unit J. So for work done also, we do the same thing. So again, N1, U1, N1 is 10, U1. Dimensional formula for energy that becomes m l to the power 2 t to the power minus 2. This is the formula for it. So I'll put 1 for the SI unit part. N2 is unknown. M2 l2 to the power 2 t2 to the power minus 2. This becomes the unit for CGS part. Now again, the unknown quantity is N2 over here. So N2 can be written as C10 for N1 and we'll divide this term by it. So that becomes M1 by M2 to the power one. The power that is given is one. Then uh, L1 by L2 to the power two. This time the power is two. And time is same thing. The way the time was in previous case, T to the power minus two. So T to the uh, T1 by T2 to the power minus two. This is what, this is what we'll obtain, right? Now, uh, see, we'll put in the values. So N2, this is 10. M1 is 1 kgs. This is 1 gram to the power 1. L1 will be 1 meter. This is going to be 1 centimeter mm -hmm. to the power 2. Time will be 1 seconds in CGS unit, 1 uh, seconds in SI unit to the power minus 2. So in any way, this will get cancelled. What we have to convert? We have to convert either convert grams into kg or kg into gram. Any one common unit so that it gets cancelled just to solve your question, right? So it's better if we write directly 1 kg as 1000 gram because even if you write 1 gram as uh, into kgs, that will be 10 to the power minus 3. And when it will go in the numerator, it will again become 1000. So directly I am writing 1000 grams. So 1000, 1 kg is 1000 grams divided by 1 gram to the power 1. 1 meters again, 1 meter is 100 centimeter by 1 centimeter to the power 2 and this has anyways got cancelled. So this is it. Now N2, this is 10. 10 into this is 10 to the power 3, that is 1000. Now 100 square, this is not just 100 this time, that we will write 10 to the power 5. This is 100 square. So 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros are going to be there. So what is the value of N2? Uh, 4, 8. This is 10 to the power 8. So 10 joules is equal to 10 to the power 8. That means 1 joule is 10 to the power 7. So 1 joule you should remember. 1 joule you should just, uh, just remember for the calculation part. But if, you could, if you can remember 1 newton, 1 joule, that would be better. Otherwise, you should just know how to solve the question. All right, note it down. Note down this one as well.
Done, ma'am. Okay, class. Now try this question. At least try this uh, first yourself. Two questions I have directly explained you. Try this by yourself, then I'll discuss it. Whoever is getting the answer, send me in the chat column. Use the same method.
Um, can you explain? See, uh, we have to convert power of 60 joules per minute into a system in which mass is 100 grams. This, what is meant by this is that you are having a new system. Initially, up till now, the the questions which we did, they are in GS unit. At one place we used air unit, at other places we used CGS unit. This time, a new system of unit is given. The way in our SI system, we have 1000 kg is 1 gram. Uh, 1 uh, kg is equal to 1000 gram. This is how we write. So in your new system, mass is 100. This is a new system that is given. So we'll be using the values like this. So the M2, L2, T2 that we write you know, in the CGS unit, because CGS unit is also specified, that is given to you that 1 kg is 100 grams for this question. Fine. This is the, SI, the conversion that is given that 1 meter is 10 millimeters in it. 1 second is 1 minute here for this new system. So we will be using this. This is just a hypothetical concept. So we will be using it. Now see, one more thing in this. Here it is saying power is 60 joules per minute. So uh, minute is also not an SI unit and we require this in SI unit. So we'll convert this. This becomes 60 joules per minute means in one minute or you can say 60 joules in 60 seconds. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. So how will you convert one minute into seconds? 60 seconds. That makes it one joule per second. So if in one minute you are having 60 joules, in one second you will be having one joule, right? It's like 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, you are having 60 joules of energy. So in one second, you'll have one joule of energy or you can convert it. Fine. Per minute, we have just converted into per second. We, uh, it got cancelled. 60, 60 got cancelled. So one joules per second is obtained. Now see, N1 U1 is equal to N2 U2. So N1, this is 1. We won't use 60. We'll use this. Uh, this becomes joules per second. N2 is unknown. U2 is the new unit that is given. It means, see, M1, L1, T1, which we write, these are fixed. 1 kg, 1 meters, one seconds this is fixed but where no we were where we were writing where we were writing all these values one gram one centimeter one second this is given to you as 100 grams 10 millimeters and one minute so we'll use this and then we'll convert it into the same unit for cancellation rest of the steps will remain same now see This will be one. Now, joules, you already know joules is what? M, L to the power two, T to the power minus two. This is per second. Joules per second, the, the uh, dimensional formula for power is actually T to the power minus three. Why? Because T to the power minus two gets divided by T. So when this T will go up, this becomes T to the power minus one. So that makes it T to the power minus three. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Um, T to the power minus 2 was already there. Now I think you will be able to solve this question. This is what was needed by all of you. N2 is again missing. U2 is the new system of units. So M1, L1, T1, M2, L2, T2 to the power minus 3, 2 here. Now N2 will again be, this will be M1 divided by M2 to the power 1. L1 divided by L2 to the power 2 and T1 divided by T2 to the power minus 3. So put in the values, just substitute this, this whole table. That becomes 1 kg. We write it by 1 grams, no? In actual standard SI unit that we have. Uh, the SI, in SI system, the CGS unit is 1 gram. Here this is given that this is 100 
diagrams. That's it. This is what is meant by the question. This will these types of questions are there in your syllabus. That new system of unit is given where one force is this much value or like this. Fine. So this is to the power one. One length is one meters. So one L2 is going to be 10 millimeters this time and whole to the power two. Usually we wrote this as second seconds, but this time one second here, but here it is one minute to the power minus three, fine? Mm -hmm. Now we just have to convert in the same unit so that at least the units get canceled and we get our whole complete number. So what we can do, kg we can convert it into gram, this becomes 1000 kg, but not 1 gram this time. This is going to be 100 gram. 1000 gram by 100 gram. Because we have converted 1 kg to the power 1. This is N2. Here, N1 is also there. N1 is getting multiplied. But that is 1. That's why I'm not writing. In the previous question, it was 10. So I wrote it. Now, 1 millimeter into uh, 1 meters or one uh, 10 millimeters. See, 1 meter will convert. 1 millimeter is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Or vice versa, you can say 1 meter is equal to 10 to the power 3 meters. Just uh, remember it. 1 meters is equal to 10 to the power 3 millimeters. So this becomes... 1000 millimeters by 10 millimeters to the power 2 is there. 1 seconds by 1 minute. 1 minute we will convert. That is 60 seconds to the power minus 3. Now everything is same unit. You can write 1 seconds in meters also, minutes also. Whatever you find it convenient to convert, it's just that both the denominator and numerator should have the same unit so that it gets cancelled out. Like here, gram, gram got cancelled, millimeter, millimeter gets cancelled, second, seconds gets cancelled. Uh, two zeros, two zeros will also get eliminated. Thousand by hundred will be ten. Thousand by ten will be hundred. So this much is left. Now we cannot cancel. Now see what all things are left. We just have to find out the answer. So N2. From here we only have 10. 100 into 100. That becomes 10 to the power 4. 4 zeros. See, 60 is in the denominator. If we bring 60 in the numerator, the power will become positive. Power ch changes. When the numerator and denominator interchange, the power signs changes. So if we are bringing 60 upwards, minus 3 becomes plus 3. Had it been plus 3, it would have become minus 3, like this. Now N2. So 60 cube, this is 2, 1, 6, uh, 1, 2, and 3. Into 10 to the power 4 and 5. So N2 becomes 2.16 into 10 to the power 8. First, tell me any doubts in this or any step you want me to repeat in here? Harsha and Martin. No, ma'am, it's clear. Clear, yeah, Martin? Fine by you? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Note it down.
đơn mà Now this is a similar type of question. Ah uh, yes yes I'll show. Let's attempt this now. So new SI unit system is here also. Fundamental unit of force is now different. It's not one newton this time. A new system is given. Last question for today and for this lesson as well. Hmm. See, if fundamental unit of force is 100 Newton, velocity is 10 meters per second and time is 10 seconds, you have to find out the fundamental units of length, mass and time. So see, force, force uh, dimensional formula is m l t to the power minus 2, right? This is given to you as 100 Newton. Velocity is dimensional formula is l t to the power minus 1. This is given as 10 meter per second. And lastly, we have time. Time is t to the power 1. This is given as 10 seconds. So these value we have. Now see, we have to substitute. You have three equations. You have three variables. It's like this. So uh, you one thing that we can do, we can substitute the value of one second from here. See, these are three equations. One equation two equation three first second and third equations we have so if you would if you put three in two we can put this in this see if you put three in two because this is one second and you have the values of seconds right so this becomes l to the power one what is the value of time uh, we are putting it here no three into one well, let me write it Put three in two, value of time. Time is 10 seconds, L to the power one. So what is the value of T? T1 is 10, so 10. And power is minus one. This is equal to 10. So this becomes L by 10 is equal to 10. 
L is 100 meters. So length we have found, we have to find mass and time. Now see for mass also, you can do the same thing. Now you know the value of L and T both. Put in here. So M is unknown. Let mass stay as it is. What is length? Value of L we have now, no? Value of this L. L is 100. So this is 100. What is the value of T that we have? 10. And power will be minus 2. This is 10 to the power minus 2. Is equal to how much force value of force is given? 100 Newton. So this is equal to. And 10 to the power minus 2. This will go in the denominator. This will become 100. Equal to 100 Newton. 100, 100 gets cancelled. Mass becomes equal to 100 kgs. Fine. This is what is mass equal to. Now, time is already given. Time is given as 10 seconds. So, time is already given. T will be 10 seconds. So, this is also the least type of question that comes. If by chance a modification is there, maximum this question will be asked. Otherwise, these types of questions or these simple types of questions are asked. If maximum something goes, it would be this. So, note it down. Note down this question. And that completes with the first lesson. Now, on today's uh, Tuesday. So, now on Thursday, we'll start with calculus. Right? So, that we can start with motion in a straight line. Note this down, please. Yes, Corona.